Uh, could you maybe explain what we're doing? Yeah. Absolutely. Here we're at one of the sites where we've been running field experiments, and this is kind of our crown jewel school. This is our nicest school. If you look around, you'll see a lot of nice structures. But this is still a low SES school. What that means is most of these kids are on federal lunch programs and federal assistance programs. Yeah, and wh what do you do here? What we're doing here yeah. is we're teaching kids fundamental skills like grit, self-control, teamwork, to get them to work on executive function skills. We believe that executive function skills are a missing link in the education production function to get these kids both through high school, through college, and in uh, well-paying jobs. So it's much more oriented at, at let's say, um, psychological skills somehow. absolutely this program here is a lot about the entire student it's much more than learning letters learning the alphabet learning math learning how to read this is more about the complete student the complete set of skills that you need to succeed in modern economies things like perseverance and grit that we know are important but these kids typically do not learn them in the household. Many of these households are broken homes, and what they need to learn about are things that are fundamental executive function skills that help them survive in today's economy. Now, the school looks pretty well, nice, yeah, colorful, etc. It's not directly what you sort of associate with, well, deprived children or... No, I think looks can be deceiving in many cases, and this is one of them. The local community has invested a lot in this school, as you can tell, which is wonderful. That's the first step. Now the next steps are to make sure that we're giving the children the proper programs for them to succeed in our educational system and succeed in the labor force. But how do you succeed in getting, let's say, the parents connected to the children, the, uh, the programs you're giving? them here. Absolutely. So we have different programs. One of our programs is a parent academy where we invest directly in the parent and try to convince them and actually teach them and give them skills to work with their kids one-on-one. -on -one. So in many cases we're not actually teaching the kids directly. We're teaching their parents what they should be teaching their kids. Yeah. Is there also a sort of incentive program you you, let's say you pay the teachers extra, or you pay the parents extra, or the <laughs> children's extra. That's right. All of our programs will always revolve around incentives. Some of the incentives will be pecuniary incentives, where we pay the parents to work with their kids, or pay the students to try harder, or pay the teachers to try harder. Some of them will be non-pecuniary. Those include field trips and giving the students information so they can succeed. So we think that the proper program has a blending of both pecuniary or financial incentives and non-pecuniary or non-financial incentives. How do people respond? Because I can imagine that, you know, giving incentive, financial incentives to people um, sort of generates a lot of discussion. Absolutely. I think whenever I talk about adding incentives to education, people find that repugnant. They think it's, it's something that's not necessary because we should be doing education for the sake of learning, people say. But unfortunately, in these communities, people do not have the intrinsic motives just to go through education because they want to, because they believe in it. Many of these families do not have intrinsic motives to go out and get education, so we have to add other incentives to get them to align with what society says, which is, let's get these students, let's give them a chance, and let's give them more education. Oh my god. I'm gonna mess up all your assessments. Oh yeah, they can stay here. Oh the kids are running around. Okay, I'm gonna go locker. Okay, I told you guys we'll have a special guest, okay? This is Professor Liss, okay, he's the department chair of economics at the University of Chicago. Okay, so definitely give him your full attention, please. Um has a great background, has done a lot of good things, and uh, please give me your undivided attention, okay? Thank you. Thank you.
So I want you guys to act as natural as possible. Pretend that nothing is going on in here, okay? Um, so how many of you actually visited the University of Chicago's econ department? The big red building that came in. A guy had, a guy had burning money or something. Yeah. Right. What did you think about it? Cool. Yeah? Big? He was sweating a lot. He was sweating a lot? <laughs> he was nervous, I think. Sometimes people get nervous when they talk in front of people or, or when they're in front of a large group. So what do you think? Do you think you could end up there as a professor? Not a professor. Maybe a, Maybe a student. Why not a professor? I don't want to teach. Oh, you don't want to teach. Don't want to teach. Yeah. But as a student, maybe. Yeah. 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 So I was raised in a community exactly like this one. I was raised in a community around Madison, Wisconsin. Has anyone ever heard of Madison, Wisconsin? What What's famous about Madison? Is it the capital of Wisconsin? It is the capital city of Wisconsin. That's where I was raised. My dad was a truck driver, and my mom was a secretary. And I never imagined that I would end up as the chairman of the Department of Economics at the University of Chicago. The reason why is because I never thought that somebody from my community could actually make it to a job like that. I, I figured people really didn't care about what I thought or what I did. A lot of you are probably feeling the same way, that. People really don't care about your outcomes. People don't care if you're going to be able to make it. A lot of you think I probably will never be able to make it. I think I'm living proof that you can come from a working class family and go to nice universities and nice colleges and actually end up being a professor at some place that's really neat, like the University of Chicago. So if nothing else, what you take from this program is you know the world is watching. You do not want to be a statistic. You want to be somebody who makes a difference in the world. And you can, because people care about you as an individual and people care about your outcomes. So take from this program not only that you can do it, but take the skills that people around the school are teaching you to succeed, not only in high school, in college, but also with your careers. Because all of you can make it. I am living proof that you can make it. OK? Does anyone have any questions for me? What have you learned in this program? Tell me one thing you've learned so far. What information have you learned from this program? Go ahead. Uh, that you can't just go around spending your money like it, you get it forever. You got to like uh, choose how you spend your money wisely. Choose how you maybe save a little bit Yeah, would be good. What else? Yes. People who have a college education make more than people who don't have a college education. They end up making a lot more. This won't, this won't mean a lot to you, but they make 12% more for every year of education that they get. 12% might not mean like a lot to you, but over time, that ends up being a lot of money. You can live in a much bigger house rather than a much smaller house. You can enjoy life a lot more if you go to school Finish high school, go to college, and get a good job. Absolutely. And you can make it. I think a lot of times people like myself and like all of you raised in smaller communities, you say, well, only big city people can make it and, and earn money. Just not true. It's fundamentally not true. Anything else? One more thing, and then I'm going to get out of your hair and let our assessors take over. You're smiling. What do you think? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> you really have to think about the decisions you make in life and in school, because like what we do now is gonna judge what we gonna what we're gonna do later. Absolutely. A lot of you are thinking right now. I have to do homework. It's a it's a cost to get up every day and go to school, and the benefits are not accruing until far into the future. I have to work really hard now, and I don't get the higher, the more money till very very many, many, many years. That's, that's a hard proposition to take because it's the cost is right now, the time and effort right now, but the benefit's not for 20 years. But I promise you, it'll be worth it. In 20 years, when all of you have made it, I want you to come back to me and say, you were right, dude. Uh, we can make it, and we did make it, and I'm really happy I stayed in school. 
Okay, so thanks for being part of our program, and I'm going to let you guys go now, and, and good luck. And if you ever need anything, I'm in the big red building. <laughs> Type in John List in Google, and email me and let me know what you need, okay? I will, I will help you as much as I can. Okay, so good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, assessors have at it. Ladies oh, and gentlemen, I know you did this not too, too long ago. This will be the last time you're doing it for us. We want to see if your ideas or anything has changed since the last time you did your iPad assessments and your surveys with us. So um, an assessor will be with you to help you out with that in just a minute. Okay, guys? There's a word you don't understand. Let me know. Berry, cherry, strawberry. Pineapple, pumpkin.